All right, we're with Dr. Gary Gibbons of the National Institutes of Health. Precision medicine will democratize health care, you told the fellows. Can you explain that? Well, we have an opportunity to take advantage of a convergence of technologies uh, that uh, should empower patients as in central in maintaining and controlling their health. Uh, patients have the opportunity to have their genetic information as well as uh, new mobile technologies in which they will have their own physical activity, their uh, uh, devices that tell them more about how their body's working day to day that happens outside the clinic. In many ways, they will be empowered as much information about their health and how their body works as their, cl their clinician, their doctor, has during that 15 minutes uh, of an annual physical. In many ways, that then provides this, them with an opportunity to really uh, play an active, proactive role in driving uh, their health and their health outcomes. That's what I guess we mean by democratization. And what difference has the White House support meant to this initiative? Well, uh, it's, it's critically important the State of the Union uh, for a health initiative, a research initiative, uh, to have the backing of the President is very important. Uh, we're encouraged that uh, that is also uh, filtered to uh, bipartisan support uh, from Congress as well. Uh, so that provides a, a great tailwind uh, for an emerging area uh, in precision medicine uh, that's gaining momentum. Uh, it also provides an opportunity, an umbrella, if you will, to bring together a number of our sister agencies, not just the National Institute of Health, but FDA and other partners, because this is a, uh, a, a, a extensive opportunity uh, that bridges a number of areas, including uh, mobile health technologies, uh, the Food and Drug Administration of regulating new diagnostics, new therapeutics. That's where that convening power of the presidency uh, plays a key role and providing the momentum uh, that in, indeed uh, ensures that this is an important investment for America to make uh, to transform discovery science into the health of the nation over the next uh, decade. You talked about shovel-ready disease. What does that mean in the context of precision medicine? Well, the precision medicine recognizes that uh, they're both short-term, near-term goals as well as long-term. Uh, many of these are aspirational uh, and will take time. New technologies, new techniques, things will emerge that we can't even imagine now. Uh, but uh, in the near term, uh, the field has probably moved the closest to really actionable precision medicines that, that's uh, changing practice really is the field of cancer uh, in which uh, uh, these uh, tools and technologies are being brought to bear in the everyday care of patients. And so that's where the initial uh, part will be from the standpoint of research, uh, doing clinical trials in which uh, a, a patient's tumor is being sequenced and that uh, sequence information will influence what drugs are used to treat it in a very active and iterative way. That's a new way of doing uh, clinical medicine as well as clinical trials. And so that's being uh, implemented within the next uh, a year or two. What promise does individualized medicine have for asthma? Well, asthma is one of those conditions, one of the most common uh, conditions affecting children, in particular uh, school day loss, uh, in which uh, we, we understand it as an interplay between our genetic her uh, heritage and predispositions, uh, behavior, uh, and our social environment. Uh, and it's that interplay that uh, there's an opportunity for precision medicine uh, by understanding uh, those genetic predisposing factors uh, that uh, this new sequencing technology, the, the ability to figure out the molecular mediators and pathways of disease that will be helpful. Similarly, we're, we're intrigued by the opportunity to figure out uh, who's most responsive to the current drugs that we have available so that we can optimize the control of their disease. And then thirdly, really an opportunity for patient empowerment, uh, for self-control of their own condition. And that's where we're uh, intrigued by the opportunities of mobile health technology, uh, where again, uh, a, a patient uh, may be able to upload to their physician uh, the information of, about their inhaler use that may tell them about how uh, their disease control is, is occurring, maybe in a way that could preempt the need for a, an emergency room visit or hospitalization. Uh, in fact, technology exists to do uh, what's called a spirometry test, a test of how well the airways are, are functioning in a way that can happen outside the clinic walls. These are all the opportunities uh, that uh, are on the horizon due to new technologies that exist. And could you share your analogy about Kodak and Amazon? Well, uh, what we're alluding to there uh, is that uh, there are disruptive technologies that come along 
sometimes unpredictably, uh, and, and in many ways that transition from analog to digital technology, um, from film-based uh, photography to digital photography, that really transforms um, uh, the landscape. Uh, and we believe that medicine is in that same sort of transition state uh, in which uh, it is emerging as an information science, uh, gathering di digital information, whether it's our genetic code or that mobile health technology telling us about how our bodily systems are working on a minute-to-minute -minute hourly basis and the cap capacity of data science to integrate and mine that day data in a way that can predict health and actually optimize uh, the care. Uh, and so that's what we think is a, really a transformative movement that's uh, exciting about this Precision Medicine Initiative. And we don't want medicine to go the way of Kodak. <laughs> we don't want medicine to go the way of Kodak, absolutely. All right, thank you, Dr. Gibbons. Okay, thank you.